Hi, I'm Danelle Robles, sales manager at Kid Robot. We're here doing a weekly spotlight for Women's History Month, and I'm so excited to introduce to you Candy Bolton. Hi, Candy. Hi, thank you so much for having me. Self-taught artist Candy Bolton creates artwork that is candy to the eyes as well as the soul. As an illustrator and painter, she constantly strives to bring her unique style of classic Japanese culture, meets surrealist art to canvas and even sofubi toys. Thank you for joining us, Candy. Um, let's begin with just talking about some of your favorite female artists and kind of how they've influenced you. So I am a huge nerd. And <laughs> the way that I was exposed to art as a child was mostly through video games and comic books and stuff like that. So I wanted to first start off with um, one of my favorite female artists from video games, and that was uh, Ayami Kojima. And she's best known for her character designs and cover artwork for the Castlevania video game series. There's just so many amazing, talented women in comic books. And I primarily read manga or Japanese mm -hmm. comic books as a kid. So a lot of my influences were from there. Um, the number one, the queen of them all, I'd say, is probably Naoko Takeuchi. She's the creator of Sailor Absolutely. Moon. Mm -hmm. She's just amazing. She, I think, popularized the idea of magical girls. As a kid, when you're watching, you might not have noticed, but they had like really good style mm -hmm. in that show. On that same note, um, another artist who did something really similar with like fashion and style was uh, Ayazawa. Yes. Um, she's known for Nana and Paradise Kiss. Those two manga were like my favorites as a kid. Um, and the fashion in there was insane. I was so, so inspired by that. And I think people who read it know that like after reading Nana, they're like, wow, I need to get Vivian Westwood armor ring. Oh my gosh, <laughs> 100%. So obviously those, um, all of those artists influenced you growing up. Are those themes transferred to the artwork that you do now? I think so for sure. Mm -hmm. Like as a kid, I really wanted to be a manga artist too. So I was really looking at like all the little details, how they use like comic tones in their artwork. I also went and got my own comic tones. Um, but now uh, I have diverged a bit from the manga style for a while. And now I'm, I'm just starting to return back to that. Then as I grew up, and my taste matured a bit. I started to look for artwork through um, art magazines like Juxtapose and High Fructose. And through there, I found Audrey Kawasaki, who I thought was, it, she's just so amazing. And the way that she draws hair in like these beautiful flowing shapes really resonated with me. But then I, I have to mention um, one of my all-time favorite artists too is, um, Tara McPherson, who not only does gorgeous paintings, so, so talented, but then she also does toy designs. So I found that very inspiring. It's been really great to see more women in our industry celebrated for the work they've done. Are you seeing that change over the years? Um, well, I think so. Like, I, I was made aware of the difference between how female artists and male artists were celebrated as a teenager and then extra aware of it when I was uh, going to college and took art history classes and women's studies classes. So it's something that's been on my mind for a really long time. And I want to see more women present, of course. Um, there's an activist group that is really, this is, they're speaking out about this and sending this message out. Um, they're called the Gorilla Girls. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've heard of them. I have, yes. So they are famous for um, asking the question. It's, it's kind of in a humorous, funny way. They mm -hmm. ask, do women have to be naked to get into the Met Museum? because only uh, less than 5% of the artists in the modern art section are female, but 85% of the nudes are women. So I think that through using those like really thought provoking ideas, 
they are seeing some progress in that field. Um, women are like half of the population, right? So yes. <laughs> the numbers should reflect that a bit more. Um, we just, we continue to be underrepresented, but I think through these um, activist groups like Guerrilla Girls and stuff, they can send out a really positive message and influence some change. But I am super hopeful for the future. And I think that right now is also a super exciting time for women um, with uh, technological advancements like the internet and social media, smartphones, artists have so many more tools available to them. And like, you don't need a manager anymore to get into a gallery. You can represent yourself. And you don't need to have your art seen in a gallery for to gain fans. You can post it online and get fans that way. How would you describe some of your themes um, in your work and have those changed over the years? You talked a little bit about going back to like the manga style. I think uh, one, of, one theme that I've always had in my artwork is color, just very vibrant, bright colors, lots of big use of gradients and rainbows probably because I was like an 80s, 90s kid and I grew up with like Lisa Frank and yes. <laughs> My Little Ponies, <laughs> that kind of stuff. So I've always used very, like a lot of colors, very bright colors. Um, another thing that is prevalent in my art is use of uh, creatures like kaiju and um, also creatures inspired by Japanese folklore. The one that I've used the most is a uh, yokai creature. Um, yokais are like, uh, they can be like everyday objects that are inhabited by spirits or they can be mischievous animals. Um, but the one that is my favorite is the kitsune and that means fox in Japanese. Um, I've used it for a lot of my toy designs. It's a theme that I just, I, I just like making more of it and seeing it used more in pop culture because I just think it's a super interesting character. Um, it's a shapeshifter. And one of it, the ways that it plays tricks on humans is by turning into a beautiful woman. So I thought it was really cool that it, it transforms into the female form and it finds strength in that. That's how it overcomes things. But then um, my style has changed a little bit recently. Um, I think it was during the start of the pandemic. That's when I shifted more into um, more, more of my manga anime inspired style and mostly drawing uh, girls and uh, like cute anime girls. Let's talk about art and in times like now where we have some turmoil turmoil in the world and you know it's kind of a crazy that we just got out of the pandemic. What is your what do you think art, how important is art right now for us? Well, I think the really cool thing about art is that it's like a universal language. Mm -hmm. it, it transcends language barriers, cultural barriers, and sometimes even time. So it can just, it can say so much without saying anything at all. And you just need to experience it for it to be understood. So I think it's a really important tool for us to utilize to overcome things together as a culture. And it just might even be the thing that makes us human. Can you talk about um, some of your favorite pieces you've created and why? So I just want to mention a couple of my collabs first mm -hmm. that I did recently um, that I'm super proud of. So I have this collaboration with the artist Great Brain. Um, it was his new toy, Nigiru-chan. And it's a soft vinyl. Uh, it's like a girl. And she has like her hands in front of her eyes with like eyeballs on her hands. So that was the base. And it was a glow-in-the-dark soft vinyl toy. So I did this really cool like alien invasion inspired colorway on it using like the glow of the vinyl to make up like the lights on the spaceship, the glowing aliens, and then like the tractor beams like coming down and like little people going up into the UFOs. Uh, it's just a really fun project that I did. That was just for like a custom toy though. Um, I'd have to say though that like my favorite piece that I made um, is Kit and Momo. So that's one of my newest uh, soft vinyl toys uh, that I produced. She's a character that's 
uh, she's like a cyberpunk fox girl. Uh, she has an, a helmet on with fox ears. And when you turn the helmet from the front, she's kind of like a serious like fox warrior character. But then you turn it around and you can have like her face showing through and then she's kind of cute. And like, she's just a good mix of all the things that I love. And also of course, inspired by like eighties and nineties anime that I really was into. They have like these strong female protagonists that I looked up to as a kid, like from Bubblegum Crisis and Ghost in the Shell. Um, also video game characters like Samus. Um, so I took all these ideas and like the magical girl stuff too. I mean, she has an animal companion and I put it together into one design and that's Kit and Momo. Um, it seems like people like her so far. I did only one release of her. I can't wait to make more and see more people have Kit and Momo in their collection. Awesome. You've done um, lots of works with lots of pieces with Kid Robot as well. Some of our favorites is the Spirit of Stay series, Dunny series, the Kayubi 8-inch Dunny. Is there a favorite that you've done for Kid Robot that you can talk about? So yeah, there are so many yeah, cool there's ones. Many. <laughs> <laughs> I love working with Kid Robot and doing new Dunny designs with them. Uh, I have to give a shout out to the City Cryptids because I also, I met so many awesome artists when we debuted that set at I think 3D Retro. Yeah. Um, and then that was where the QB Dunny got started. So she had a debut there and then she was uh, remade as the eight inch Dunny. Um, so that, that one, of course it has the Kitsune imagery in it that I like from the front. She looks like a fox with nine tails and yeah. you turn it around and she's a girl that's, and it's like supposed to imply a transformation. My all time favorite kid robot piece that I did has to be the Hello Kitty one. Cause yeah. working with Sanrio, collaborating with them on that was the chance of a lifetime. Like I love Hello Kitty. She's such a beloved character to so many people. It was almost hard for me to come up with a design for it because it's just so important to me. But I finally decided that I would attempt to do a, a grown up version of Hello Kitty. It's like she's not sure who she is in the world yet. Uh, she still likes the stuff that she liked as a kid, but people are telling her to grow up and cast those things aside. My message to everyone, though, with this toy, um, and I tried to convey through the design, is that people should nurture the things that they enjoy from their childhood because those are the things that make you, you. Wonderful. Is there anything else um, up and coming we can look forward to from Candy Bolton? Well, I have a new design that uh, just debuted at Wonder Festival in Japan. It's a collaboration with the artist Frog Tree. So we literally collaborate on the designs. We both like uh, Japanese mythology and those kinds of creatures. So she has her own that has like, she designed the uh, unique head for that one. And I have a unique head for my piece, but they share the same uh, body designs. Right now I have the Plants of Hell series that are up in my uh, shop right now. That was a collaboration with Trash Talk Toys. Um, and they're like potted plants, but kaiju. So if you're looking to get some new toys, I have those available right now. Well, thank you so much, Kenny, for joining us and happy Women's History Month. Thank you so much for having me.